Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mows. In today's episode we're going to take a look at part of the other job lot I've got uh, moving through the line. I did one yes, a little Quicksilver and is a pull cord had broken on it um, originally and that, that's all it was. So there's no point in me even showing that video because pff, it was a pull cord fix. Uh, and the mower was a really, really good nick. I don't think it's done any hours at all. Despite the fact it's about eight or nine years old, it is spotless, there's not a mark on it. So that's all we've done up on the pile, waiting for its new owner to come and pick it up. Um, so the next one is a little Mountfield uh, push mower. I'm not quite sure what model it is. The sticker's come off the front. There should be a sticker on the side. I'll try and identify it later on for you. Done nothing to it at all, other than just, just push it in the garden. Hadn't even tried to fire it or anything like that. We'll just see how we get on. So we'll go out in the garden and we'll um, put some petrol in it, try and fire it up, see what it does, see, see why um, someone has thrown it out to a tip um, and for what reason. If this is your first time in watching Mixed Mows, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told why I've done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down on dirty and let's check out this little Mountfield mower and try and get it to run, start and do what it should do. Right, here it be. Little mount field. Uh, it's a mount field. It's got a WA45 overhead valve 140cc engine. Um, there is markings on it. But I'm not quite sure what it say yet. It says type, but I'm not quite sure what it is yet. It might be a bit further down. I'll have to give your sticker a bit of a clean up. Um, but it's got a pull cord. That's all there. Um, some of the hardware's loose, but that might be me where I put it on the trailer. Um, I'm not sure the year yet either. I have to figure that out when I get it inside. Ah, oh, but the drive, the self-propel cable is not brilliant. Someone's done a bit of a, a bit of a fix on that. So let's look at that. Um, so it could be just with a drive cable. But it does look like it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's not right. Um, so let's have a look. Let's check some petrol first. No juice. I'm going to get some juice for it. And we want just enough petrol in the machine just to wet its whistle because it'll be tipped upside down and all sorts of stuff to repair that drive cable. So a bit of juice. That should be enough for what we want to do. Happy with that. So it's a priming machine. That's on. Don't want to fight for long because I don't be always liking it. Let's give that three or four pumps of the old, uh, the old finger. All right. Let's try and fire it up, shall we? It's a bit of a knocking noise coming from underneath. I think I know what that is already. Um, the drive cable it's looking at, and everything's loose and everything's dirty. So let's get it up in the uh, on the bench. We like it dirty, don't we? We like it get down and dirty. Let's get it up on the bench, give it a clean off, inspect that knocking noise, and um, we we'll have to reroute this cable. That's a bit of a shame. I hate doing gearbox cables, but that's what it is. Um, but nice little drive mower. So yeah, up on the bench, tied up, back in two ticks. Right, here's a mower up on the bench. Just had a bit of a gunk off on it. Just found the label. And it's a 2016 mower. And it looks like uh, it's a ESL 464TR. Um, made in Italy Group, which is where Mountfield comes from. Um, so 2016, so not too bad. Not that old in the grand scheme of things. So literally all I'm gonna do for the next 10 minutes is just literally gonna spend a bit of time cleaning the machine off, get rid of the dirt and dust and what have you, and um, make it look a bit more presentable. Because I don't like working with uh, machines being all dirty. It looks like this has been near concrete or something as well. So um, let me get it cleaned off, 
a bit more presentable for you guys. And then we come back and then we'll have a look at that knocking noise that's underneath. I think I know what that is already, and some of you guys might know as well already, because they're quite common. And I think I've got a spare part in for it, which should be good. And then uh, we'll come back once it's all been cleaned off, and uh, we'll get on with, the, I think, the two repairs at the moment. It's going to need a new drive cable, and uh, I reckon a new belt guard cover is what I think it needs. But uh, we'll have a look in two ticks. Let me get cleaned off. I'll be back in a bit. Right. Machine's had a bit of a blow off, a bit of a clean up, um, and sprayed WD-40 just, just to try and loosen some dirt and grime off. And all the handles are all loose on these. And they always suffer with the same problem. All the handles are always loose on these. And the handles feel flopping horrible. Just takes nothing than 10 seconds just to tighten them up. Better. That's all good. Right, so first one I want to do is move the machine around and prop it up so that I can uh, investigate the knocking noise on this machine. I'm just going to go up under my filing cabinet drawer, just like so, where I can get to it. Let's put you guys there. Let's get my stall in. I'm hoping to find under here um, a broken um, belt cover which are common on these. Uh, let's have a little a little look. Yeah, one broken belt cover. Stamped off at the back. Let me show you guys, let me bring you in. So now underneath the mower, as you can see, all loosey goosey. Okay, only been held on by um, a half inch bolt up top here. Uh, the two studs are broken down the bottom. Very, very common for these type of machines. And I think I've got one in, um, on my, in my spares, I think, a brand new one. I did order a couple up at the beginning of the season that I've not yet used. Uh, so 7 16 so I want to get a half inch. I'm sure that's a half inch up there. Uh, that one there. I'm sure he's half inch. Let's put that 14 mil back before I lose that. Cool, my wordy wordy. I don't want that. There you go, so what have we got there? Spinning engine bolt, lovely. That's well on there. So what I'm going to have to do now is we'll have to remove uh, the blade, number one, um, to remove the cover, and I can get to this, um, this bolt here. So let me find my 14 mil. It should be about a 14 on here. 14 mil breaker bar. I'll take the H2 lead plug off as well whilst we're here because we are mucking about with a machine underneath. There we go. And let's see how tight that, bla that, that, that blade is on the screen. Let's have a look. Let's have a looky. Let's go that way with it. See what we got. Oh, very loose. Really loose, actually. I mean, deep walk might have done that. So that's the blade off. I'm happy with that. A couple of additional washers that don't need to be on here. But hey ho. So the blade is absolutely mutilated, which is which is common. So now we can remove said blade guard. There it is there, all broken off, and you've got the broken bits down here, which what I do, I get my I get my cutter and I make these into um flatheads so you can move them easier. And up inside the gearbox, oh my lord. Let's get you in there, have a look in there. Let's get you right in if I can get you get as close as I can. Bit of camera knocking going on. Whilst I get you in. Have a look up in there. We've got bits of paper. Absolutely full of stuff in there, packed to a bilges. So I might be getting via the back to have a look into there in a bit. Uh, but yeah, but not not good. Um, right, so next one I want to do, I want to try and get that 14 mil uh, that half inch bolt off. I need to get a 13 mil socket onto my um, engine. That's a 14, I think. Too big on a 13. 
You're 13. Um, so I'm at the top of the engine now, just locating a, a 13 mil um, bolt. And I'm now trying to undo this, this one here, if I can. Right, come off that time, look, the whole lot come off together. But I think I've still got the half inch bolt to remove off of that engine bolt, so I may just have to put a new engine bolt in there. Yeah, because the actual engine bolt is there, you see. So I've got to try and get that socket off first, and then somehow I've got to try and um, get this, uh, these two apart. So what I'll probably do is put this in a vise and put a deep weld socket on that and try and move it off. So I'll get that done, and I'll be back in two ticks. Right, I've got all that, all that uh, hardware removed, and here is uh, the old belt cover, and here's a new one, and they look... They look relatively the same. They all pretty much are. Sometimes a bit of plastic cutting is needed, just to sort of make them fit. But that's gonna go onto there, that screw into there. Yeah, that should go. Yeah, it's about the same one, isn't it, I'd say. Cool. I might have to remove the boss. Is that never gonna, that's gonna come off too? My boss has just fallen off, lovely. Oh my lord. I'm gonna have some right luck today. All right, that's gotta go up into there. All got into there eventually, I think. Yeah, that'll go into there. Yeah, that should do, shouldn't it? I'll be happy with that. Right, so I've got a belt cover to fit. Um, always pays to have a bit in stock. What I'm now going to do is um, there's two Phillips heads here to remove screws, but the, normally they are so badly corroded. What I do is I just get my grinder um, with my cutter stone on it and just, just put a big slot into those and turn them into a flathead. So let me just, just grind them into a flathead and I'll come back when I've done it. Okay, so literally all I have done is um, just got my grinder and I literally have just cut in two flathead gouges into these screws and you can see, my screwdriver, if my light stays up, right, you can then, with ease, just remove them. So don't muck about with mole grips. I know that Mr. Mower Man uses an impact and what have you. I just get my grinder out with my cutting, cutting um, disc on it and literally I just cut them into a flathead screw. And you can reuse those, okay? See how easy that is? No mucking about. Saves time. Yeah, that's of course if you've got all those tools. If you haven't got the tools in, then you've had it. But anyway, I have. Um, and so I bought them. So, um, so that's cool. The belt is off now. I'm going to stop it there, uh, not the video, but um, not do any more with, it, with this belt because, um, or with the cover because I need to sort out this drive next. Let me show you the issue I've got and then um, we can look for a fix. Right, so around the other end of the machine now, as you can see, drive cable at the bottom, um, hanging on for dear life, Funct fully functionable, um, but um, not working. Now the problem is I, couldn't, I can't join on to that because there's not enough there really for me to muck about. I suppose I could do, but someone would spot that in my and when they're going to come to buy it and they wouldn't like it. So I'm not going to muck about with that. I'll take that off. And then I'm going to come back down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to tip the machine up on its side. Yes, it is oil in this machine. And yes, it is petrol machine. I'm not overly concerned at this moment in time. I'm going to turn the machine around so that the carburetor is facing up as when I tip it up. Um, I'll check the oil first anyway. Cool. Just to see how much it's got in it and what the oil, oil is like. Oil is watery yeah i might i might have you all out okay i'm gonna take you all out anyway i'll take you all out um and then i tip up on its side i'll come back to once i've done that and then we can start to uh have a little look to see what's going on with this machine with regards to the drive because um it needs a new drive cable or a, a cable fix on it so we'll, uh, we'll do that. So all out first, tip it up, come back, see you in two ticks. Right, so uh, all the oil's now out of the machine and look at all this stuff up in here. Look, it's, I think we might even have a bit of a mouse nest in here because they've got shredded paper in here. So I've got Mr. Mousey might be in here. We might go and wake him up. Let's have a little blow off. See what we get. I can't get him via the, oh, I can get him via the back. Have a handy, Harry. Sometimes you can't. Well, on this one we can. So, flat-headed driver. There's a little window around the back here. 
which you can peep the red in. And sometimes they're plastic sealed, you've got to sort of cut them out a little bit to free them off. Attach, just pop them out and just bend them back. I don't think they're designed for you to look anyone a beanie, but I'll have a look in here. Oh. Yeah, they're not designed for you to go in. But when you put it in for a workshop, you can guarantee your, your, your lawnmower mechanics are going in here. There it goes. Yeah, there's a mouse nest in here. Definitely. Mr. Fluffy's in here, isn't he? Let me get a craft knife. I'm struggling to get in there. There's definitely been a, a mousy living in here. That's better. Let's have some of that. Now we can get in. Yeah. Right, I'll show you around the back here. Mr. Mr. Fluffy's been living in here. We're about to evict him. If you're still in here, you're going to be evicted. Let's bring around. Whoop, there you go. Mr. Fluffy. That's Mr. Fluffy's house. He lives in here. Definitely, 100%. I don't know if he's still in here or not, I don't know. I'll keep an eye out in case he jumps out. I don't want a mouse in the old shed if I can help it. But he's been nice and warm in here. Let me get my air gun. I think he's already, already, already gone. Let me just show you what I got out of there. Look at that lot. See, Mr. Mousy was in there. All right, let me get it cleaned up. I'm back in two ticks and uh, we'll go from there. Right, so Fluffy's been evicted uh, from, his, uh, from his domain. Now what I need to do is um, I'm gonna cut the far end of that cable, okay? On the handle end. I'm gonna cut that so that we can pull it through. All right, we don't need that no more. Now up in here, I'll try and show you. There's a little tiny spring, and then there's um, a little tiny ball, I'll show you, and then it goes up into the cable housing, okay? Let me try and get you in. I'll, uh, I'll try and zoom in and show you, so I have to pause it and come. Right, I've got you zoom right in. Um, so this little tiny spring here, just where my finger is there, that's got to come off of this blue, this blue arm, okay? Once we get it off the blue arm, what I'm then hoping to do is to, is to manufacture a cable and then thread it all the way up in. So we're actually going to leave the cable um, in situ, okay? We're not actually going to take the cable out. That's the theory to my madness. So I'm just going to back you out a little tiny bit, guys, because I do need to get in here at the same time as trying to show you. So this little tiny spring, I'm going to remove that off of that blue arm, okay? So that comes off. And then I'm going to pull that out. And that will come all the way out. Okay, guys. All the way. It's going to get caught up in places. There you go. So that's that cable now out. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is manufacture a new cable with that end uh, to go back on and then thread it all the way back through again. So quick, easy, simple fix on how to repair a drive cable. This would be a good one. Right. Over on the bench. I didn't eat all my lunch. Birds can eat some of that. Right. Um... Where's my cable, here it is. So I purchased um, off of Amazon or eBay, I think it was eBay, um, cable, and I buy it by about 30 meters. Yeah, it's not tightly, but that's, that's mixed mowers, right? Um, this is 1.5 millimeter diameter braided stainless steel wire. You can find it on eBay, just search it up, it'll come up, okay? All I'll do is I'll pull a lump out, all right, got my bird's nest, that's it. All I do is I, 
get my original cable. I uh, just literally like for like. When I get to where the end is, I just then give it, you know, a lump, a lump more, not a lot more, just a bit. I think this is about 14 pound for 30 meters. Okay. So at one point in my life, I will sort that mess out, but I, I'll do it later. Okay. So this end here now, uh, that's got a little tiny bobble on it. Okay. Now what we can do is you can either join that with my cable crimpers or what I now do is I cut that off Save a bit of spare, because that might come in handy another day. All right. <clears throat> Keep my spring. I now get rid of my redundant cable, which is going to be that one. That one can go for a Burton in the bin. I then go over to me, me, uh, my box of many things. And in my box of many things, I've got these uh, cable connectors, cable crimps. You get them on uh, eBay, Amazon. And they're for 1.5 cable crimpers, okay? Lots of people have asked me in the past, where do you get them from? That's where I get them from. So you want that, and then you want your spring. So what you want to do is, you want to put your spring on, you can put your spring on later if you like, it makes no odds. I literally just put my cable crimper through, right to the end. Let's make sure you're in shots, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, you can, all right. Right at the end, and then all I do is I'm going to squeeze that up, right at the end, make sure it's in. That's it, about there. I need a new vice as well. Uh, about there, I then give that some mixed mowers therapy and squash that off, okay? Now I've done this repair before on other machines and it's proven to be successful. No other person has ever come back to say, nope, didn't work. All my cables have snapped. As long as you put enough weight on it, and I've got plenty of that on there, that's fine. Now what I do is get my Nipex pliers, thank you Luke. And all I'm going to do is, I'm going to shave a little bit off of that, about there, cut that off. Now what I'm hoping is when I thread me my spring back in, through there, bump, it then comes all the way up, and I now want my spring to sit inside it. So that's just a little bit too big, okay? So I'm going to just take, get my nipex again, and ever so gently, just take another little sliver off. Try that. I want that to, that connector to actually fit in just inside. Now when you get to about the right size, you then cut this end off at like an arrow. So about there, that end will be all right. Nearly there, we're very close. You can always take it off, you can't put it back on, right people? Should get in. I think that's got. I think. I think that's a one. Yeah, that's a one. So it won't come through the end here. That won't fit through there. Um, so that's cool. We're happy with that. Okay. So now that will not come off. I guarantee you that will not come off. So just make sure it's in the vice. Squeezed up nice and tight. Shut. Make sure it fits in. That's lush. And now that's in there. Now back over to the mower and I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. Right, now that's in, this end goes in last, obviously. So now what I wanna do is get your other end of your cable, which is a nice, nice tidy nick on the end of it. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna thread that through the cable armature itself. It's a bit fiddly, so just bear with. But once it goes up in, it should just go, okay? It's gotta go around some corners, somewhat have you, around some curves, so give your cable a bit of a tweak, help it on its way. I'm gonna go all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. There's a join in the cable there, so I've got to go past that. Yeah, it's going. I'm nearly at the top now. I'm just looking for it to come out the other end. It's reached the far end, so now it's got to try and negotiate it past the actual end piece, which is the hardest part it's got to, it's got to get past. There it goes, right, I now see it out the other end. That's now come out the other end of, the, of near the handles. Now what we want to do is hook this little tiny spring onto that arm, preferably done with a pair of pliers or something similar, over top, in place, that's done. Right, so that, that's that cable now re-threaded. All you now got to do is tip the machine up back on its wheels again and marry up the other end. 
Right, so as you can now see, this cable is now all the way up to where it needs to be. And if you put it ever so slightly, the drive cable engages, okay? So now all we've got to do is roughly guesstimate, you know, how much throw we've got. So we've got here roughly, oh, about an inch. So you don't want to have this cable all the way down here, okay? Because by the time you engage it here, you're never ever going to get all the cable all the way up. So what I recommend is you have it engaged. And all you want to do then is engage your cable, mark it where it stops, okay? So that's fully engaged and then slacken it off. So that's roughly where you want to cut your cable just there, okay? So let me get a, a, a marker pen. I'll do exactly that. I've got a permanent marker. So I close the cable. Let me get my pen ready and poised. So we want to close the cable, up, close, close the handle up at the top, and then engage your handle, your, your drive, and mark it about there. That's roughly where it wants to go, give or take. So there. It's not an exact science, people. Mark it about there. We're happy with that. Then get your Nipex pliers or whatever pliers you've got. I've got Nipex, cheers, Luke. I'm then going to cut that right in the centre. Now, this is a fun bit. On eBay, you can get Amazon, you can get Dog Leg Z cable fittings. They look like this. And they're exactly the same as these ones here, okay? So just look them up on the Dog Leg Z bends or something like that, they're called. Come with a little tiny flathead screw. And all you've got to do is undo the screw, put your cable in, like so, and then do that up. Right, now, once I've done up, you can use a flat-headed driver. What I tend to use, because I want to make sure that's not, not ever going to come off, is I use a pair of pliers. And I then just literally force that on. There is a little tiny socket to it, if you like, a nut on the end of that, so you can just put a socket on there, but I use a pair of pliers nice and tight okay so then you can then hook up your drive into there and look as i said fully engaged nothing worse than doing it and you can only engage it that far okay so there is a possibility it could come out okay it could do but nine times out of ten it won't do okay uh, well, if you go to sell them, I'll just say, you know, there's your drive. If that comes out, all you've got to do is just pop it back, pop it, pop it back in, mate. That's all it is. Yeah. So you could do that. You can also just get these and join them up as well. Uh, in my old videos, you can see about joining cables. But now, yeah, that drive's locked off. It three wheels. Lock it off. It locks off. Absolutely brilliant. So that cable is exactly where I expect it to be. So I would say that would possibly come off at some point. But as long as you tell the person, you know, if it comes off, bruv, like that. All you've got to do is poke it back in the hole. It's common sense, right? Take two seconds and away you go again. So that cable is now fully um, working. And as I can say, um, we haven't had to buy a new cable there. 14 pound for uh, 30 meters of that. I use loads of it and I've used about two quid. So if you had a spare bit of, uh, you know, an old push bike laying around with long enough cable, that repair there for that drive cable could have cost you about three and a half quid. Okay. Cables for these, um, 17 pound plus. Right, with that cable now done, all we now got to do is a question of now tip the machine back up on its side again. Over there somewhere. And now all I've got to do, um, I don't suppose you need to see it really. I've got to sharpen the blade, that's what, that's what I have got to do, definitely. I've then got to refit this belt on, make sure it's on the back pulley already, which it is, which it is, yeah it is. Um, that's got to come up and over the, the shaft. And then I've got to refit the boss back on, this one here, make sure you don't forget your keyway. And then refit the belt guard, which was which was um, which had come off with a belt guard. I've got my new one on. Here it is. It's my new belt guard, a bit squished, but it'll be alright. Um, so that can go up into there. Yeah, that'll all screw in. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that's all on. That all fits up there as it should do. So yeah, we're happy with that. So that's all good. Um, and then we're good to go. So you haven't got to see any of that really, I don't think. There's lots of videos on how to do that, but uh, you know, um, as long as you put your your blade boss on with the keyway, it goes in there, put that on, put that onto your onto your, your belt, so that's all on, sharpen your blade up, put it all back together, good to go. So let me get that done off camera, you haven't got to see that, and then um, once that's done, uh, we'll go outside, we'll check the drive works, and then um, make sure we have done have that, that hideous banging noise we had before. After that, I've got to service the machine, but uh, that's pretty standard stuff as well. So I'll meet you in two ticks once I've done the belt, put the blade cover on, 
put the boss and um, belt back on all together, all that sort of stuff. When it's done, meet you outside, go for a fire up. Right, so that's a little mountain field now done, finished. Um, blade chart and balance, uh, new drive cable or uh, drive cable fix. Um, apart from that, a new belt guard, done. It's got to be serviced yet. It's been tipped, I don't forget, so I may not want to start too well because it has been tipped. Let's give it some pumps. All I want to do is make sure it runs and then uh, test the drive. That's what I'm after. So straight away, no clattering noise. That's what we had before, didn't we? Remember? And now the drive. Do the job. Yeah, happy with that. It's a shame there's not a bracket to hold that up there, just to hold it, hold it there. That'd be lovely. I could put a little, a little bolt in there or something to hold it up, but I don't I'll bother. Start off his own back. Yeah. That's a tight little mower. That is 2016 Mountfield now all up and running. All he wants is a new air filter, possibly, and a new spark plug. Good to go. Okay, Mountfield lawnmower now done. I'm a bit tired today. I've been doing quite a bit of it this past couple of days. Um, I've got work tonight as well. So, uh, Mountfield now will finish off. I'm not sure what it is, if it's a 464, I think it is, not off the top of my head, I can't quite remember. Uh, new belt cover, um, new cable uh, going up through, and that cable will outsee the, out the mower, but that's in my opinion. Uh, that's a great way to fix them. So buy the 1.5 braided stainless steel wire, a couple of ca uh, cable connection ends, and you're good to go. You can make any cable you like. It's fantastic and so much cheaper as well. Um, it's also had a um, new oil put in there as well. It's got to have a new plug, new air filter anyway. Uh, but runs, drives, starts, stops, does everything it should do and uh, should make someone a nice little mower for the season uh, this coming year. So hopefully um, it'll be gone very, very soon. If you enjoy this little video of how to repair a um, drive cable on a mount field or any mower for that, for that, for that fact with a, about sort of four or five pound investment, you can get um, some good results. Um, give us a big thumbs up and uh, ring the old bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to seeing the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.